Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night, dear viewers. Delete each salutation as required, depending on your time zone, to this rather sombre video. Uh, the mission we're conducting in Kerbal Space Program today really isn't anything too wild. Here is the rocket. It's a simple mission to the moon and back, but the context for why we're doing this will hopefully be an interesting subject and it will kind of make sense. You see, and it pains me to say this, it was announced that uh, on reddit.com slash r slash Kerbal Space Program, I don't know why I didn't just say the Kerbal Space Program subreddit, but regardless, uh, they announced this week that the legendary weekly challenges are coming to an end. The last one has wrapped up, and it was it was a real honor that my entry happened to win <laughs> first place for that one. A humble brag. I didn't realize it was going to be the last challenger at the point, so I guess that's kind of, it was kind of nice. Uh, but yes, um, to kind of celebrate the weekly challenges, I thought it would be fun to do the first ever challenge the subreddit did, which was to travel to the Mun and back again. Of course, this was back in the old and the old version of the game, so it was much harder to do than it is today. So to try and make things, you know, slightly more challenging for myself, I've forbidden the use of making a maneuver node to get to the Mun. I'll do maneuver nodes for the rest of the mission, but forgetting to the actual Mun, which is the only place it's really required, uh, at least for kind of newer players. Um, I'm not going to allow maneuver nodes for that. And I'm also I've also disabled Kerbal Engineer Redux, which is the mod I usually use to show kind of fuel levels, delta v and kind of negates the need for the map screen. So it makes it good for videos, but you know, for, this, for the sake of making this challenging, that's what I've done. And there goes the last of the asparagus boosters. Asparagus staging is where each of those peripheral fuel tanks feeds into the next to create the most, theoretically the most um, fuel efficient uh, lifting stage. Anyway, uh, getting a little bit sidetracked here. Uh, as, I, as I was saying, I've just, I'm not allowing the use of Kerbal Engineer and I'm not gonna make, make a maneuver node to get to the MUN. So you can kind of see how to get to the MUN, uh, get a MUN encounter without instruments to help you. Now you may be wondering why I care so much about the weekly challenges. To be honest, I rarely do participate in these days anymore. Uh, but the fact is that without the weekly challenges, and indeed the subreddit as a whole, this channel, as we know it at least, uh, would almost certainly, will definitely, would not exist. I'm now going to talk a little bit about my history on this website, at least when it comes to, you know, becoming a quote-unquote Kerbal Space Program YouTuber. All the way back in ancient times of 2014, I purchased Kerbal Space Program. I enjoyed it, uh, as you might imagine. <laughs> uh, I started getting fairly okay at it. Back then I was a student, and as part of my degree, um, I had to spend a lot of months at various hospitals on clinical placements, which often meant that I had to stay in run-down accommodation that very often didn't have any internet. As such, I played a lot of single-player games on my laptop, and KSP was one of these games. As I got more invested, I took a I took a ganders at the Kerbal Space Program subreddit to see what things other people were making and, you know, quickly felt inadequate <laughs> regarding my own ability. So, you know, if you watch my videos or see any of the subreddit, don't worry, we've all been there and all thought we suck. And I'm not, I will have very readily admit there are many players on the subreddit who are better than me. Uh, hopefully not that many. No, I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, as I got more invested, uh, I kind of started looking at things people were making and I thought, you know what, I want to try and get... I want to try and get good, as they might say. So yeah, I started to lurk, lurk on the subreddit more and more, and I noticed that a lot of users had a little flare next to their name. Some people had the word Master Kerbal Nought next to their name, and a few others had Super Kerbal Nought next to their name. Now, being the big-headed ego inflation seeker that I am, I decided to embark on a quest to learn the secrets of acquiring such an elusive title. My quest lasted about two minutes, wherein I discovered that one acquires these flares by completing something called a Weekly Challenge, an arbitrary mission set by one of the subreddit moderators that was posted once a week, as you might be able to ascertain from the title Weekly Challenges. There was there's typically like two tiers, I, I don't like to, I, I it, feels, it feels so sad talking about this in past tense, but there was typically two tiers to every challenge, an easy mode, which would net you a custom picture next to your name, and a harder mode, which upon completion grants you the title of Master Kerbal Mort. So, it was set then. I would complete the hard mode of the weekly challenge and gain my flair. It just so happened that the challenge that week was something called Periscope Down, with the mission requiring the player to send a submarine to the oceans of Leith or Eve, with the hard mode tier being to launch a Brahmos-style missile from it. Brahmos missiles at the time were kind of like a meme in the subreddit, so a Brahmos missile, for those that don't know, it kind of launches up vertically, a second stage deploys, and a smaller engine physically orients the missile horizontal, and then the other stage 
engine fires and it shoots off along its way. Anyway, that's what a, that's what a Brahmos missile is. It's not particularly relevant to the story though. I chose Eve as my target because it was the easier location to reach out of the two, uh, especially given that re-entry heating hadn't been added to the game yet and there was obviously no requirement for the craft to return to Kerbin to complete the challenge. So I had a look at uh, what was required to complete the challenge and get the flare and the rule stated you had to create an image album uh, showing various points in the mission to prove that you'd legitimately completed it. Now, I was very paranoid about missing an important step when it came to taking photographs and documenting my mission and you know I'd, I'd, already, I'd always enjoyed like editing videos of random stuff in the past so I figured you know rather than make an album I'd make a short video. At the time I was a big fan of the YouTubers Hazardish, Mr. Overfloater and Cupcake Landers and you know I kind of wanted to do a video in that sort of style that is you know a music video a music based video lasting around four to five minutes. I didn't have a YouTube account at the time so I just uploaded it to my personal personal Google accounts YouTube channel which was Matt Laum. I don't know why I felt the need to clarify the name of this channel but there you go. But anyway I was happy with my video and so I submitted it to the subreddit. And I guess I wasn't the only one that liked it. Uh, I got a fair view upvotes and amassed quite a few thousand views on YouTube. And you know, my subscriber count, my subscriber count grew from like zero to probably about 900 in the space of a couple of weeks with that video. And to this day, that video still has quite a lot of views. I think it's sitting over just over 300,000, I believe. I don't think I don't think it's broken the 400,000 mark, but it's up there in terms of kind of view counts. But no, I quite liked um, seeing people leave feedback on my video and uh, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed making it so I decided to make another Reddit challenge video. This time I was going to try and get the Super Kerbinaut Flare which I learned required players to complete hard mode but go above and beyond and make the mission even more impressive in their own way. The challenge that week was to land on the moon using only solid fuel so I thought I would aim for super mode by returning back to Kerbin as well. It seemed to work because I was granted with the flair along with lots more positive comments and feedback about the video and you know I, I am still really proud of the video I did for that. Uh, Matt, if you, I'm sorry if you just google Matt Lau on um, solid, solid fuel mum landing it will come up but no that's one of my still one of my favorite videos I've made I think. Uh, but yes and so the, the trend that really became the trend. Uh, every few weeks whenever a reddit challenge piqued my interest I would film my entry and submit it as a short video and post it to the subreddit. I probably got to about 5,000 subscribers doing this format before I started branching out and trying my own ideas but I was still basically relying on the subreddit and doing the weekly challenges to bring in the views. So I guess that's pretty much the origin story of this channel really. It was a channel where I would do the reddit challenges and you know I've, I've since you know expanded my horizon since then but um that's that's a brief history of this channel. But look at that! Uh, I can't get too ahead of myself, we have now touched down on the Mun, and I, to be honest, wasn't really looking at the screen as I was monologuing just then, uh, so I, I, I realise now that I had a lot of things I planned to talk about in this mission but never actually covered it, so here we are quickly uh, manoeuvring the rover away, which I neglected to mention we were bringing to this mission, but here we are. Uh, and also, one of the things I mentioned at the beginning of this commentary is that I wanted to showcase how to get to the Mun without using maneuver nodes and then I completely forgot that that was a thing I was planning on mentioning but hopefully you got the gist of what I was doing. You basically wait, so you watch the spacecraft uh, in low Kerbin orbit and just watch the horizon and as soon as the MUN appears start burning prograde. That's pretty much it, that's how you get a MUN encounter from Kerbin without a maneuver node maker. But there is Jebediah uh, planting the Laon aerospace flag. I didn't uh, bother naming this landing site <laughs> because A I couldn't be bothered, you know, I'll talk about why in a second, I don't want to you know, start diverging on topics like I normally do, but yeah there's Jebediah planting the flag. As I've mentioned in my LAN aerospace series, I use, I use flags to kind of mark out which biomes I've visited, so in this case we're in the Highlands biome right now and so I knew I'd already visited this one so I didn't want to clutter the map screen with loads and loads of flag names and I just thought it'd make it easier, I'd make it easier for myself so that's how, kind of why I use flags in this game but uh, you know wow, what a what a beautiful little shot right there. We've got, we've got our Jebediah, Bill and Bob in shot there with the flag, the rover gradually rolling out of control towards the lander and of course the blue marble in the background so you know I think as shots go this, I might use this for the thumbnail but you know, that remains to be decided. So we are currently on my science playthrough uh, save and you may have noticed that there is no science kit on the lander itself and that is because we put it all on the rover so we could in theory drive to multiple biomes and you know I designed this lander 
to uh, kind of have enough fuel to visit multiple biomes. So the way you could redock, you could like redock this rover to the lander. Here is my incredible driving skills, by the way. I forgot to disable SAS on this rover, and I think those wheels are probably a little bit too powerful for the size of the rover we have, so, um, oops. I guess I just wanted to try out the Apollo-style uh, uh, wheels. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I used Jebediah to, <laughs> as you can see, gracefully flip it over. I'm pretty sure this is what NASA would have done if their lunar rover ever ended up in a similar predicament, but it didn't actually solve anything. So this time, I thought, let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, you know, uh, fold out. I couldn't think of the word then. Fold out the wheels and try again. And look at that. It went perfectly. Hang on, hang on. And there we go. It's as if, it's as if nothing happened. So we can uh, disable the brakes, disable SAS, and just let this thing drive along. So we're going to just go for a little drive, take this thing to maximum speed. We can take some science points, and uh, Jebediah can sit there and watch. He can, I don't know, guard, guard the lander. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't really think of a good story here for the thing. Speaking of stories, by the way, in Kerbal Space Program, you may be wondering why this video is being uploaded rather than Green Harvest. It is currently Friday night, and I had to come to the difficult decision that... Uh, uh, I made the decision yesterday, but then I then I played tennis, so I didn't actually do anything yesterday. But uh, I realised that Green Harvest Episode 6, as much as I wanted it to come out today, when you guys are watching this on Saturday, uh, it wasn't going to be ready in time. The number, of, or at least to the quality I wanted it to be at, it wasn't going to be ready. So, you get this. But I hope this is an entertaining mission. We have bangs, flashes, and explosions. As we see there, the Kerbals miraculously survived, but the... Uh, the rover did not. I guess I just really wanted to see how fast this thing could go, and I, I overcooked it a little bit too much. And so we are left with Bill and Bob in a tricky situation wherein they need to be rescued. Who could we call in such a situation? On a lonely planet, slowly spinning its way to damnation amid the incom- That's right, this was an episode of Blunderbirds the whole time. You didn't even know it. Neither did I at the time <laughs> of doing this mission, but there we go. You guys kept on. You guys keep asking for Blunderbirds to come back, so I hope this wasn't quite as disappointing as I imagine it will probably be received. I will do Blunderbirds again at some point. In fact, I would like to do Blunderbirds again at some point. But you know, I'm letting it. I'm letting it die down because you know I didn't. I fi I, I quote unquote finished season one not that long ago, and by finishing season one, I mean I, I've now rescued Kerbals from every single planet and most of the moons as well. Actually, no. Only the Mun, in terms of the moons. I've done Mun and Minmus, and Tylo and Laith, in terms of moons. So I guess we haven't done all the moons yet. But I mean, like, you know, if if you if you like strand your Kerbals on Gilly, that's that's basically natural selection at this point. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gilly on fumes, and ladies and gentlemen, this is a big moment for me. That's right. This channel has once again exceeded all expectations because that's right. Matt Lown is now the first person ever to crash land a ship on Gilly. Thank you very much. I will take that as a, as a huge honour, guys. Thank you so much. But worry not. In this case, for Bill and Bob, we have our lander nicely uh, floated over. And had to spend a long time. You use this, by the way, I get this asked a lot. To switch between vessels like I just did there, you use the square bracket keys on the keyboard. So, yeah, I have to just keep on clicking the square bracket key until I could select the curve I want and not just one of the pieces of rover debris. Rover debris? Rover debris. That's what I get when I try and talk too fast. I'm trying to work on this like speed problem I have as in I'm not addicted to the drug speed I mean just in general I talk very fast uh, I'm like, <laughs> if you listen to my early commentaries I'm like hey guys so wake up and you can't even, you can barely understand what I'm saying um, and a lot of patience at work because I've, 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 I've like, like I've, I've specialized a little bit at work in my eye job so I deal a lot more with um, specifically macular degeneration which affects old people and so they're coming to the room and I'm like, hello, I'm, and they're like, I'm sorry, can you say it again? I'm deaf. And I'm like, okay, okay I will slow it down. So, how have you been getting on since we last did your last injection? How is your sight? And, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm trying to let that kind of reflect in my comment. This is like an ongoing struggle I've always had when doing commentaries. I'll, I've literally <coughs> done a commentary, then... La like watched back at it and I'm like yeah, I can't even understand what I'm saying and I was the one that said it and I you know so I, I am trying to sort of gently if I find myself 
talking very fast. I'll often just close my eyes and just start talking at a nice soothing pace because I think a lot of the problem is is that I can see the screen. I'm like, oh, we're in orbit. I need to start talking orbit, but I need to finish this tangent I'm on first. So it becomes very, very hard. So I kind of just slow down. Let's just relax, take everything back to pace, and we'll, um, we'll unpack. That's, um, you know, the struggles of being a commentator on YouTube, I guess. Uh, here, the maneuver node maker stopped working, so I guess we can follow through on my promise of trying not to use the maneuver node maker too much. So we're just going to uh, burn more or less backwards along our orbit here and wait for our curb in periapsis to fall. Kind of aimed below 20 kilometers, so I think we've got about 14 kilometers there, so we should easily capture into Kerbin's orbit. And, well, we can say goodbye to the Mun, and that's pretty much coming up to the end of this video. I hope you liked this craft, by the way. I was really proud of this. This could be one of my favorite Mun landers. I mean, it's it's not Apollo style, it's direct ascent, so it kind of loses some street pride there. But in terms of, like, the general layout of it, I thought it looked quite good, especially because it has that rover design, um, the rover in the middle of it, but it doesn't compromise on having the inefficient peripherally mounted engines. It uses the Terriers. And, you know, I decoupled the lower stage just then, to uh, get some nice fireworks as we re-entered and it didn't even blow up so I checked the cheat menu to make sure I hadn't somehow accidentally turned on uh, you know uh, ignore max temperature and I hadn't so I thought well why is it not why is it not blowing up so uh, then I, I opened the difficulty settings and you know it re-entry heating is at 100% so I I don't know I guess I'm just that good at the game guys you know this, this video definitely deserves a like and subscribe and favorite and you know Use your alt account to smash that like button once again. And on that note, we'll uh, we'll show some... Uh, hang on. The video's not quite over yet, Matt. Now the parachutes are open, and we have a beautiful sunset view. And so on that note, on screen, are some links to other things. I'll put a playlist of all the times I've entered a Reddit challenge, because, you know, that was kind of the at least the beginning theme of this commentary. And the other one is just selected for you based on your viewing habits by YouTube's AI. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope to have Green Harvest episode six next week, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend.